Hello and welcome to Midlander Gaming. Thanks for joining me for another video. Um, this one is going to be a little bit of an update on the Epic Waterloo uh, purchases. Uh, gonna, I think going to turn this into a bit of a series because I'm quite excited by the game system and it seems to have got a, a good response from you guys who are watching. So hopefully there's something here for you as well. And also I'm going to use uh, this particular episode to uh, a highlight some of the things I've seen when I've been modeling and painting these up um, but B also ask for some advice from you guys as well who are no doubt a bit more um, experienced with this era and this uh, rule set uh, than me so I guess it's a good opportunity to uh, have a bit of interaction with the community um, and yeah it's such trying to improve my aspect of the hobby uh, and knowledge um, but also pass on anything that I found out while uh, producing these parts. So I'm going to pass you over to the other screen where I've done some uh, initial work on the sprues and just give a bit of feedback on what I've found so far. Um, so if we flick over now. So here you are in an image where, where this sprue is actually not from the set that I got when I was visited Warlord Games, but this is actually from a, a free sprue I got when I went to the Warlord uh, Games Open Day. Uh, so there was one set of, you could either choose French or British, and uh, obviously I went British, um, of free infantry. And not long ago, it was actually slightly before I bought the box set, I decided to, um, it'd be fun just to have a bit of a paint them up and just, just trial. So I sprayed them with Citadel Wraith Bone Spray and uh, unfortunately, despite me doing no anything, well, as far as I was aware, nothing different than what I'd normally do, unfortunately I got this kind of a frosting effect on the um, plastic and to be honest it's ruined the sprue. Now I know there's some products you can buy to take all this paint back off so I'm going to do that because I don't want to waste the sprue. Uh, but yeah, I was a bit surprised. I'd not really had this effect happen with Wraith Bone Spray before, so I was a bit surprised that it happened uh, on this occasion. So I kind of chalked that up to maybe I did something wrong, it was cold when I sprayed, you know, maybe there was moisture in the air, or I'm not sure. I, I did warm the can up prior to it, so you know, I thought oh, I would be, be good, but yeah, I got this effect. So scroll on a little bit and we get this image now this is from the sprue at the set this time just to doubly make sure of, of doing a better job i went out and bought a brand new can of citadel black spray uh, chaos black spray again i warmed it shook it thoroughly um, again it was a cold day outside about six degrees so it wasn't the most ideal of temperatures to to spray in, but i figured with the warm can um, I'd get away with it and unfortunately I got this kind of frosting effect again. Now it wasn't on every single stand, so some stands were worse than others. Um, yeah, I sprayed them all at the same time on a, on a piece of wood as you can see, uh, what they're attached to there. Uh, and unfortunately um, I got this frosting effect. Now the only other option I could think of is maybe washing the um, plastic sprues first, which I've never done with plastic before. Um, but interestingly, I did also spray a couple of stands up using a Vallejo, um, it was actually bronze green colour, uh, British bronze green colour, but it's pretty much a very, very dark grey green colour. Um, and that actually sprayed up perfect, not a blemish on it. Um, and then I just over sprayed with a bit of white automotive spray afterwards, um, which wasn't the best spray, to be honest, it's an automotive spray, so it doesn't spray very fine, it's a bit blotchy but it, there was no frosting whatsoever so two different citadel cans and two different sprayed at two different times using what i thought were good methods and i got frosting effects so something to be aware of now it could just be fluke or coincidence but for me it's made me kind of start thinking about using airbrush uh, and vallejo paints to start priming these instead the other reason i'd like to go to the airbrush to be honest is the sprues themselves and the models themselves are actually very, very highly detailed at such a tiny scale that I find it actually quite, as you can see in that image, I find it hard for the spray to get into all the nooks and crannies. 
I kind of feel like an airbrush might do a better job of that. Um, I might be able to direct it more and, and layer it on in thin, much thinner um, refined layers as well. So I do think that these might benefit from being airbrush primed than spray primed more so than other models. Um, but yeah, the uh, the frosting, I don't, I can't say, I, it could also be just down to me and the cold weather or, or poor applications. But yeah, it's something to be wary of. So this image, it's that exact same stand that you just saw in black, but I went over it now with the white scar spray, which was also a brand new can. And while the frosting is still there, it seemed to have slightly improved. Now, I don't know if the white can with the solvents maybe um, softened it back up again and, and, and spread it all out. Or I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what kind of chemical reaction may have taken effect to it make it appear unless it's just purely appearance because when the white went on it didn't look as bad um it's not crisp as, as when i used the vallejo's hobby spray but it's it's much better than it was so at this stage whereas the first brew with the wraith bone was is totally ruined i don't want to try, even try and attempt to use that i'm gonna i'm gonna um, strip that for this one after this stage i kind of thought you know what i might get away with this to um carry on using so I've not I won't probably won't strip this and I will probably will um, try and recover it so moving on anyway as I said um, I did get on despite being on the same stand I did get some that sprayed up fine and this luckily was the command stand so as you can see here it had a black um, coat first so the chaos black GW spray and then it had a um, white scar is it yeah, white scar spray from GW afterwards, and it seems much better. Very, very crisp, luckily, which on a command stand you want. You can still see a tiny bit of frosting in a couple of places, um, so it did suffer it a little bit, but overall it came out pretty good. So I was kind of chuffed that at least, if any stand was good, it was this one because this is obviously always going to be the um, the main focal point for a unit. So we'll move on. Okay, now we're going to get into this kind of painting tutorial side. Now, I've, I'm afraid I've done it all via images. I don't know, there's, there's a few painting tutorials out there already by people who are probably far better, well, are far better painters than me. So, you know, it might not be necessary for me to do a painting tutorial. However, if you guys fancy seeing how I paint them and, and would be of interest to uh, of seeing me doing a painting tutorial, by all means, post some comments below. I'll happily um, respond and whatever you guys would like to see, I'll, I'll try my very best to do it. Um, I'll caveat that with, uh, I don't actually have the video recording equipment, I don't think to, to do a painting tutorial, but if there's enough demand and you're interested in doing it, for sure I'll uh, invest or sort something out to, to, be able, to be able to create that. So moving on, what am I doing to paint these? How, how am I going about it? What processes and what colours? So from day one when i viewed the sprues I, I, I knew i was going to go with the contrast paints or the speed paints or whichever version of paints you would uh you particularly use um purely because I, at this scale i just wanted it to be as fast as possible so in this image here you can see for the red i've used the flesh terra contrast red and for the black i've actually used the basilicum gray contrast paint or basilicanum or something along those lines be purely because I find the if you use a pure black, you lose a lot of the detail. Whereas the basilicum grey, as you can see, when it goes into the grooves, it creates a nice black shadow. Um, but then it goes lighter on the outer bits and gives some natural highlighting, but still looks black. Um, and later on, when you'll you'll see as we go through, I give the whole model a, a normal oil, oil wash anyway, which darkens down these black areas. So for me personally, I'd just go with the grey for black areas. I just think a black is sometimes too black and loses detail. So moving on. Now I've skipped a couple of steps here. Sorry, I didn't take all, all pictures, but here we can see another image. And in this image we can see I've added the flesh. So I've gone with the Gulliman contrast flesh. Um, and on the hands I just picked out, um, went over again, just picking out a bit more detail to make them stand out a bit more against the wood stock. So I used like a flat flesh, I think it's called, or medium flesh from Vallejo, just to make them pop a little bit more. 
Um, for the wood, nearly all my wood now, I use the Gore Grunter Fur Contrast Paint because it's just such a perfect reddy brown colour that it just looks great for all wood. So that's what I've used for the rifles. Um, I've used the Lead Belcher Silver for the uh, bayonets. Um, and you can just see in the back pack, uh, yeah, in the background, the backpack or the roll bedding, or I'm not sure what it is, but that roll there that goes across the back of their backpack is picked out with skeleton hoard contrast paint again. Just make it nice and simple. Um, the white sections at the moment is purely the leftover from the spray, so I've just tried not to go over them when I've been painting and leave them behind. Um, and what I'll do is just to give them extra def definition when I wash it with Norn Oil, I wash it all over the black as well and it just makes the uh, straps stand out a little bit more. Um, which you can see in this image here. So I've washed these now and the wash has gone into all the nooks and crannies and just give some extra de extra definition to these white areas. And it's done the same for the trousers as well. Just put some extra blacking in on the hats and the what the hat's called shakos is it I believe. But yeah added some extra um, definition all round. I've also painted the cuffs with Calador blue. Now I believe you have to do the collars as well, but they're so fine. I don't, I really didn't fancy wanting to overspill in other areas that I didn't bother because I think from a distance you can't actually really pick out these collars. Um, so I know really you should do it, but I think, and, and for reason, for sanity's reasons, I didn't bother picking it out. So yeah, so Calador Blue. Um, this is actually retribution gold. Now again, I know it should be a brass colour, but I just thought the gold stood out a bit better. So just to, you know, um, I'm kind of going for um, not necessarily a perfectly accurate historical colours, but just making it pop on visually from a, because these are tiny figures from a distance, you need to make sometimes just make it pop out a little bit more. Um, and then I've just copied down the, or extended the um, lead belcher just down the shaft of the, of the musket because of that seems to be what they have um, probably goes to this bolt action lever here or I'm, I'm guessing it's not bolt action is it's probably a flint lock flint flint lock or something similar but it again I just did the strips just so visually that's all I think that's all you need okay um, one thing I, I wasn't aware of at this stage as I was painting them up were these plumes I had no idea what colors they should be or anything a bit later on we'll have an update to that um, but at this stage, I didn't know about the shoulder pads, what these mean, what the plumes mean. So I was just kind of winging it to a bit of a pun there, but winging it um, at this stage. So I've got just a couple of pictures in different lights because my lighting at my desk isn't that great. Um, that's probably one of the better pictures lighting wise at this stage using my mobile phone at least. Um, but just zooms in a bit more so you can see some of the detail. Um, I did actually highlight these cuffs, but it doesn't look like it's showing up on this picture. You can see a little bit there. Um, again, it's not greatest pictures. When we get to the end, we'll see a better picture with a proper camera. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the unit finished. Um, took about an hour, I think, to get this to this stage, um, which reasonably happy with. But when you see how many stands you've got to do, it's quite daunting at the same time. Okay, and there is just a couple of stands done now next to each other and laid out. Um, again, you can just about see the highlights of the blues now. Um, I've obviously missed the, the lead on lead belcher down the shaft of these rifles. I don't think it's the end of the world. What I've decided to do though, because it takes so long to paint these, and you have them in ranks of two, one behind the other, is I've decided now, moving on, that I'll paint the front rank extra extra detail in and, and care the back one i will keep a bit more basic because you can't see half of these troops anyway you know you can only you can only see them a bit so the the highlighting steps and things like that will probably miss out for the the rank that goes behind the front rank and i think that'll just be you know stop me going mad and also just improve the process uh the speed up the process of completing units and that's it them ranked up and as you can see what I just mentioned there you can't really pick out the back ranks you know you can see them but you can't see the exact detail so moving forward I'm going to have the best cleanest models at the front and the um, speedier completed models 
at the back. Um, and I think that will, that'll work well. I think uh, there's no need to be spending as much time on the back rank. And this is the command. So this one again, I just it's not a finished picture, but um, I've just spent a bit extra time on the command um, just because it'd be in the central piece. And you've got different characters on there as well. So just picking out the gold um, buttons and uh, the strings on the drum and so on and so forth. And here's where I started adding the plumes now. So I read, read a bit more of the book and the um, painting leaflet and it talks about what these plumes mean. Um, so that this particular battalion or regiment is red with a white top. Um, so I've got some standard bearers just picked out. So the gold parts are picked out with retribution gold, same as the um, header part there. I noticed he had a gold like strap in some of the images, so I'll put that on. And I, I saw these were yellow, but I just stuck with the gold because I just thought it tied in nicely. The sashes, I'm not sure what colour they're meant to be. I think they were a brown in the um, book that I saw, or an image that I saw, but I didn't really like the brown, to be honest. So I've left them white at the moment with the aim that I could eat change colour at any point but for now I don't mind the white so I'm going to leave them white but if you guys have some kind of input on what they should be or shouldn't be I'd appreciate that so again I just picked out the base of these I guess they're like the bayonet shafts maybe um, in gold um, and then the I might not have mentioned it in a previous step but when I put the black um, non oil wash all over I then go back over these straps with just a bit of uh, a Vallejo white just to pick them out, just to give a bit of definition and highlighting again. And where I can just try and tidy up some of the, where any kind of overspill. So yeah, so, and then the base I've just done with a, just coloured in with a um, snake bite leather, I think it is, contrast. Just watered down a bit, just to give it, you know, give it a brownish colour ready for basing. So there's the stage we're at at the moment um, I think I've got a bit further than that so I'll flick to another image ah this is where I started painting the commander or brigade leader or I'm not sure the name brigade general um, and here you can see the frosting that this guy suffered from so it was quite heavy on the face bit on the body and bit on the horse um, again I felt it was not enough to warrant having to strip all the paint so I cracked on and tried to complete him as best as I could and just a note on the palette and the color scheme whatever colors I've used on the previous I've used exactly the same here so flush terror is red caldor blues retribution golds I've added a yellow here just for the trim of the horse this is a couple of layers of basilicum gray just to darken it down a little and that's one layer of basilicum gray on his trousers with a just picked out yellow on the stripe there and the horse is done with an apothecary white um, contrast just to put some definition in the muscles um, and then I washed the mane and the tail with an all oil just to darken it up slightly and the straps is all the snake bite leather contrast so yeah but try to keep the same color palette just to give some kind of uniformity to it and that's the position where I am with how much I've painted so far so I've done that in about a few days of painting I say days it's you know a few hours in each evening of painting um, and yeah quite happy got way through it these are the, probably the worst frosted parts um which is i think it's the 95th rifle unit which is a, a bit annoying um i'm going to see if i can re recover those whereas the rest of I've, I've plowed on i think i can do okay um so we'll finish with an image which is taken with a better camera and better lighting which gives a true reflection of of how the, the models look so here you can see now all the highlights pick, picked out a bit easier um, and uh, picked out the sword and the gold now with just little bits here and there you can see a bit, the commander a bit better so for the basing I've gone with a kind of a it looks like a it's, it's this flock I've had for ages so I don't know where it's from to be honest but it's kind of like a, a woodland sort of almost looks like muddy bark um, which I thought perfect for this so I've applied that just PVA glue and just applied it straight on. I've not bothered trying to smooth out the, the, these bases. I'd love to do it, but with so many bases to do, I don't want to slow myself down. So I've just done PVA straight over the top, use this flock, and that kind of flattens it out, and then just put a couple of two mil 
spring or summer grass um, tufts on, and the same to exactly the same to the uh, brigade commander's base as well. Um, but there we go. So pretty happy with how they've come out. Um, quite chuffed overall. Uh, the I think the red and the blue colours go t together quite nicely. So happy with the blue. I know they can get different regiments out of different um, colours. Um, but yeah, I went with the red and blue because it just, just looks nice. Um, I've got so many troops I could maybe intersperse them with other colours. Um, so there we are. Now, one question I was going to ask you guys to, for feedback. So these red plumes that we talked about earlier. Now I did notice that it said um, light infantry have, I think it was the green, and they go on as you look at them they'd be on the right hand side or the left of the uh, regiment and the grenadiers go on the opposite side or vice versa i can't remember which way which way around it is and they have all white plumes so that's fine i understood that so i painted them as as such but what effect do those have game wise a grenadier and a light company on the flanks of a unit i couldn't really see what that what they do game wise is that just just fluff and it's just you know, historically, you just had grenadiers and a light company. I don't know what what marks out someone out as a grenadier in a unit and a light company in a unit. Um, I don't know if there's something they were responsible for, or you know, I know you can break off the end end units to go on into skirmish. So is that is it something to do with that, or with the grenadiers, kind of like the engineers of the unit? Or yeah, if you guys can feed back what the detail is there i'd appreciate it um because i'm still reading through the book i've not got the whole way through yet it's a very big book uh, enjoying it um but yeah still got a lot more to read yet and there we go flashback to myself now so uh i hope you enjoyed that um let me know what you think about whether you want to see me paint these in person um or if you're happy just to see the images as i progress through the army got quite a few stands so i think that's well, that's one stand there that you saw in those images and um, there's nine more of those in the starter set and uh, plus six cavalry sets i think light and heavy cavalry i don't i don't know what the split is i don't know if it's three of each or two and a four or whatever but definitely six cavalry bases so there's still a lot to crack on with um and also um there's more sets to come so my the colleagues my friends uh, are also getting into epic waterloo um, and between us we've got everything so the prussians the french and the british uh, and they've kindly said they'll uh, pass their boxes to me so i can open them up and show you guys the contents so we're looking forward to that um, getting some more waterloo epic uh, content onto the channel um, if there's anything in particular you guys would like to see because we've got the mdf terrain and things like that also coming um, so I'll be making that up and I'll hopefully do some images of painted models. But again, if you would actually see, prefer to see the painted uh, videos as I paint them live, um, or at least time time elapsed, um, let me know and I'll see what I can do. So there we go. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, try and get some more content out as soon as possible. I've got a few more unboxings to do for, like I said, some for Epic, but we've also got some Victory at Sea and some bolt action so we'll try and get those on the channel as well and at some point i'm going to try to do some i'd like to get to battle reports but i think first to learn the game i might do some actually learning the game um, battle style reports where i play out turns basically um, give my interpretation of the rules and give you the opportunity to correct where i've made mistakes um, or offer advice uh, so I think that'll be good and I think it'll, it'll definitely help me and hopefully it'll help other people that are maybe struggling with the rule book and the, uh, any kind of complicated areas of the rules because it's a big book. So anyway, thanks for joining me. I hope that was uh, informative and uh, I look forward to, to doing more of these and catch you again. Oh, and if you haven't subscribed, really would appreciate you subscribing. It'll help me out um, understanding you know, how popular this epic is and if you want me to do more of it. Um, helps me out get, getting the um, content out there to 
to relevant people and hopefully uh, gives you guys uh, an update when you when I send out a new video you can see straight away that it's uh, been uploaded because I, uh, I don't schedule them I'll just load them whenever they are throughout the day so they could come out very late at night or early in the morning or <laughs> whatever so yeah if you think about subscribing I'd appreciate it thank you very much all and I'll catch you again soon bye bye